All right, so I'm going to preface this segment by saying I think that to compare individuals like Marjorie Green to any member of the squad is stupid. It's a false equivalence, obviously, because Marjorie Green is a deeply, deeply unserious conspiracy theorist who has no policy solutions. Whereas the squad, the reason why they're controversial, unlike Marjorie Green, is because they're proposing policies that are bold, that the donors of a lot of Democrats and Republicans don't want passed. So that's why these folks are different, but they still get compared because they're basically seen by the mainstream media as the far left and the far right of both parties. And that may technically be true from the standpoint of like the U.S. Overton window. But still, I don't necessarily think that Marjorie Greene is that different from the Republican Party collectively. Having said that, though, I, I do want to look at this poll from Morning Consult because they examined controversial remarks from Marjorie Greene and Ilhan Omar. I don't think that what she said was controversial. Obviously, I'm biased and in the camp of Ilhan Omar. But still, this poll, even if I don't like the comparison, it was really interesting because it highlights how tribalistic the Republican Party's base is. So the title basically sums it all up. Voters are slightly more likely to see anti-Semitism in Ilhan Omar's latest comments if they know she made them. So here's the quick summary by Eli Oakley. The share of GOP voters who see anti-Semitism in Representative Ilhan Omar's remarks comparing U.S.-Israeli-Afghani actions to those taken by Hamas and the Taliban increases 11 percentage points when the Minneapolis Democrats' name is attached. 11 percentage points. That, folks, is statistically significant. Now, Democratic voters were slightly less responsive than Republicans to the lawmaker's name and party affiliation when it came to controversial tweets from Omar and Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene. 49% of Democrats hold unfavorable views of Greene compared with 57% of Republicans who view Omar unfavorably. So let's just step back, disregard that last portion, and we'll tackle that later. But Democrats, according to this poll, the sample size is just under 2,000, they are more likely to form their opinion based on the substance, not based on who said it. This is really fascinating. So here's the breakdown. Voters were asked whether the following tweets were anti-Semitic or not anti-Semitic, with half of respondents seeing the names and party of the lawmakers who said them and the other half seeing only the statement. So here's the statement from Ilhan Omar. We must have the same level of accountability and justice for all victims of crimes against humanity. We have seen unthinkable atrocities committed by the U.S., Hamas, Israel, Afghanistan, and the Taliban. I don't know how this can be seen as anti-Semitic, but it turns out um, most people who don't know that Ilhan Omar said this tend to agree. So the voters who did not know who said this, 41% said it was not anti-Semitic. That's a plurality. 27% said they don't know. And only 31% said that they think that that statement was anti-Semitic. Now with identification, 35% of voters, if they knew that Ilhan Omar said it, said that it was anti-Semitic. Now, it's still the case that most voters, that is a plurality, said that it was not anti-Semitic, even though they knew it came from Ilhan Omar. But still, that is uh, very interesting. Now, when you base it on party affiliation, so when it comes to Democrats without identification, 31% said that that comment was anti-Semitic, and 42% said it was not anti-Semitic. But with identification, Democrats were less likely to say that it was anti-Semitic. So, you know, you see a little bit of a change when they realize it's from someone like Ilhan Omar, who's a good faith actor, who Democrats obviously are going to more likely approve of. But now here's where it gets really interesting to me. So when you look at Republicans without identification, 40% say that it's not anti-Semitic, 36% say that it is anti-Semitic. So most Republicans, a plurality, think that it's not anti-Semitic. However, when you tell people that it's Ilhan Omar, 47% now say that it is indeed anti-Semitic. In other words, when you tell Republicans that Ilhan Omar, someone that they don't like, made this comment, then they think, okay, yeah, that's definitely bad. Okay, now let's look at Marjorie Greene. So she made this comment. Vaccinated employees get a vaccination logo, just like the Nazis forced Jewish people to wear a gold star. Obviously anti-Semitic. Now, all voters without identification 
they thought that this was anti-Semitic. A majority thought it was anti-Semitic uh, without identification. With identification, they were less likely to say that it was anti-Semitic. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, when you look at Democrats, without identification, 64% thought it was anti-Semitic. And more people thought that it was anti-Semitic when they found out it was from Marjorie Green. So that's a pretty big jump. But let's look at Republicans. So without identification, a majority of Republicans saw Marjorie Green's comments as anti Semitic, but with identification, less people thought that it was anti-Semitic. So let's pause for a moment because that's a lot of information. Um, basically, the takeaway, simply put, is that Republicans are more tribalistic. Democrats are still tribalistic, but Republicans are much more tribalistic according to the results of this poll. So they will have an opinion of something, but that opinion will change based on who said it. And this is really fascinating to me because what I want, like the goal is to have people form opinions based on evidence, statistics, data. But what you see here is that Republicans are going to change their opinion on something based on who said it. Like the political identity really influences people's opinions of a particular statement. And this really reminds me of an old segment, I think it was on the Jimmy Kimmel sh show, where they asked people, like they went around and they said, listen, what do you prefer more, the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare? And a lot of people were just like, yeah, I, I, I like the Affordable Care Act. And they were asking why. Well, it's more equitable, you know, Obama, you know, he made Obamacare and that's bad. Now, obviously the Affordable Care Act and Obamacare, this is the same thing, but people didn't know it. But because Obama was associated with Obamacare more explicitly, people were less likely to want to support it because they hear Obama bad. So they just like have this visceral response to Obamacare. So that's what this reminds me of. You know, it's like Republicans initially, they say, well, that doesn't seem anti-Semitic. But then, you know, uh, if they know that Ilhan Omar said it, they're more likely to say, yeah, that's definitely anti-Semitic. It's truly fascinating. Now, one last thing I want to look at here. So Republicans more likely to dislike Omar than Democrats are to dislike Green. So overall, electorate holds similar views of both members. Now, this is a little bit uh, depressing to me. So all voters, their uh, opinion of Ilhan Omar is um, mostly negative. It's net unfavorable. Whereas when it comes to Marjorie Green, she has a slightly lower favorability, but not as high as an unfavorability as Ilhan Omar. So Ilhan Omar definitely triggers this like negative reaction in a lot of American voters. And I think that a lot of this has to do with her being the only member of Congress who wears a hijab. I think it's Islamophobia. But on top of that, I do think it's also perceived extremism that is shoved down the throats of Americans by mainstream media. Uh, but independence so they tend to uh, like Marjorie Greene more than Ilhan Omar, according to this poll. And I won't lie, that kills my soul. It kind of makes me lose faith in humanity. Um, but it just goes to show you how brainwashed people are. Again, Ilhan Omar and Marjorie Greene, to even like speak, at that, speak about them in the same sentence, it's, it's absurd because there's no comparison. These individuals are incredibly dissimilar. One is a serious lawmaker, another is a clown. But having said that though, perception is reality. And when you are brainwashed, when you hear constantly how extreme these individuals are, even if you don't necessarily watch Fox News, if you're not high off the Fox News Kool-Aid, I mean, still, you're going to hear about the extremism of Ilhan Omar. And so, you know, you might not hear it directly, but you might hear it secondhand. You know, someone who does watch Fox News might say, oh, I don't like the squad there. They're super extreme. So, I mean, that that stuff works. So, um, yeah, very interesting uh, to say the least.